you are flying over the gently swelling hills of America that are the Ozarks, where the local flavor of the national tongue is Arkansas. Say, Ab, how much corn did you raise this fall? Well, we didn't uh, measure it all, but I figured about 20 gallons to the acre. <laughs> In this region, a hundred miles north of Little Rock, the beat of the music, as here at Mountain View, is strictly folk. Father time said to Mother Nature Before our labor cease Let's make just one more beautiful thing And it'll be our masterpiece it'll In nearby Blanchard Springs, sights like these, delighting the eye, are but a few of the surface features of the Ozark Hill Country. But native son Jimmy Driftwood sings about a special beauty to be found here that goes much, much deeper. Then they built a beautiful castle with pillars tall and round. Most beautiful castle in all the world and they made it underground. They call it Blanchard Cave, love. They call it Blanchard Cave. Most beautiful castle underground, and they call it Blanchard Cave. For more than a thousand years, this remnant of an early American lay waiting for history to catch up with it. What was an Indian doing here, deep under Arkansas? There is only conjecture. In 830 AD, as the science of carbon dating tells us, he had come into this cave, for reasons unknown, and by what way, uncertain. From these very reeds he left behind, we can fathom how he lighted the darkness. But suddenly, the light went out. And this first explorer never found his way to the surface again. But long, long before any human being set foot within the cave at all, nature had first to set the scene. It was many millions of years ago when the planet Earth was still a borning. All of what we know as Arkansas, indeed all that is now the United States of America, was largely covered by a shallow ocean. In it lived many forms of sea life. Jellyfish-like creatures floating near the surface and along the sandy bottom, strangely shaped water animals who had discovered how to use the lime that's dissolved in seawater to construct shell homes for themselves as a protection against their enemies. As the eons passed, these shellfish, when they died, piled up on the floor of the sea. Millions of them. Billions upon billions. Those at the very bottom were crushed by the weight of those that followed. Deeper and deeper became the layers of lime-rich shells, the pressure from above finally pressing them together into a kind of soft rock we know as limestone. 
While throughout this long, long period, the ocean bed, responding to natural forces, is known to have risen from the sea, only to be covered once more. It was not until about 50 million years ago that the land, land such as our Ozark Dome, was uplifted, never to be totally submerged again. Now, that which had spent most of its time for millions of years underwater was exposed to the surface elements. Wind, changing temperatures, especially pelting rain, erode and wash away the outer skin of the earth. As rivers form and meander to the sea, gradually mountains are shaped and valleys. It is such ancient history that cradles the genesis of Blanchard Springs Caverns in the Ozarks of Arkansas. The principal sculptor of the caves lies locked and invisible in every single drop of water that falls from the sky. It is called carbonic acid, formed as the rain absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's what the bubbles of fizz are in a bottle of cola. It increases as the drops pass through the decaying vegetation cover of the Earth's soil. Charged with the force that carbonic acid contains, these drops of water trickle down through the tiny cracks in the surface of the mountains. The carbonic acid begins at once to dissolve and wear away the rock. As it rains, more water moves in to enlarge the openings and deepen them, making an inviting path for the water to travel down through the soft limestone beds and even sideways between the layers, dissolving, ever dissolving. Crevices become channels. Channels turn into tunnels. Tunnels join together and become rooms, water filling the whole carved out area. With the passing of ages and further changes in the Earth's crust, new crevices form. Moving always downward, the rock shaping water travels deeper and deeper along these fresh pathways, sometimes widening to carve out entire rooms at still lower levels. Ultimately, perhaps some of the water makes a natural outlet in the side of the mountain and bursts forth as springs or beautiful waterfalls. Slowly, the underground area that the carbonic acid dissolved drains away. Thus, after billions of years of creation, epochs before George Washington, the pilgrims, Christopher Columbus, Socrates, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. Yes, taking the time it took for all these to come and pass, and millions upon multi-millions of years more, at last, finally, a cavern is born. This is Blanchard Springs Caverns as it is today. Tomorrow, it will be different, because it is a living, not a dead cave. Even as you see it, the acid water is still working its miracles. Carving, shaping, changing. Look closer and see. These are stalactites, rock formations, often ages in the making. They are formed by the lime that the acid water dissolves as it travels down through the limestone. A young stalactite is hollow, about the shape and width of a soda straw. They grow longer, up to six feet, with each drop of water coming down through the empty tube, water that evaporates, leaving its cargo of lime behind. When the tubes become clogged, then the water has to come down the outside surface, making the stalactites grow fatter. Sometimes, instead of evaporating, the drops of lime water fall to the floor, causing formations to grow up from there. These, broader and blunter than their ceiling cousins, are called not stalactites, but stalagmites. Occasionally, the stalactites coming down from the ceiling and the stalagmites rising from the floor join, like this. Such a formation is called a column. 
Some columns are veritable castles in themselves, rising, like this one, to a height of more than 60 feet. There is almost no end to the wonders that can be designed by a little acid water dissolving limestone. For instance, flowing along a crack in the cave ceiling, it might form sheets or drapes, hanging like a curtain instead of dripping to make stalactites. Running along the original wall of the cave, the lime may precipitate out to leave a ripply stone surface called flowstone that looks with layer upon layer accumulating over the centuries like a frozen waterfall. Like the Great Wall of China, only inches high, appear these formations on the cave floor known as rimstone terraces. They are made when a flowing stream of water hits pebbles. The calcium deposit so created builds up again and again at the same point. As the water runs over the lips of these walls, it creates step-like terraces that hold back little captive ponds. But not all the cave's features are hardened into rock. Look, an underground river, racing along deep in still another level of the caverns. Skin divers plunging into this stream found their way to additional cave rooms, some almost dried out, some still filled with water. Four hours later, they emerged here, almost a mile away, at Blanchard Springs, which, like the cave itself, takes its name from Civil War homesteader John Blanchard, whose grist mill stood close by. Sunlight permeates this lovely outdoors, and where there is light, there is plant life. Even here, around the cave's original discovery hole, where ferns in summer hug the stone. But as we penetrate deeper, all that remain are mosses and algae. Listen, where the daylight is an intruder, in the cave's eternal nightness, creatures exist. You may not hear them, but they do. To a question asked the darkness, is anybody there? The answer, could they answer? would come back resoundingly, yes, we are. This is Friend Bat, seldom loved, much maligned. Bats are not really blind. Their tiny eyes work quite well. They are our only flying mammals, and when they do fly in the dark, they make squeaky sounds you and I cannot hear that bounce off the walls and formations, warning them of obstacles to avoid. Some types of bats are very social. They like to live as close to their fellow bats as they can get, hanging head down. This is a cave cricket. He's a kind of wingless grasshopper, only he doesn't chirp. One cave study showed that every night, except in the extreme cold of winter, one-third of the crickets take their turn to travel out of the cave to forage on green plants, coming back with their stomachs loaded with food. The isopod is what scientists call a true cave dweller. Sightless, he never leaves. Like his ancestors before him, he is born, lives, and dies in the cave's darkness. And here, the salamander. Like the occasional cave visitor, the frog, he likes to live where it's damp, 
For to survive, his skin must remain moist. He likes nightlife because the air is humid then. That's when he chooses to go out to feed. Yes, these are the co-stars, so to speak, of the cavern's animal show. Creatures of the eternal darkness, whom you are not likely to meet on your well-lighted cave visit. In time, as more centuries come, more epochs pass. As sure as there will be changes on the sunlit surface of our land, so too, down here, deep in the Ozark caverns of Blanchard Springs, will nature continue with its work of creation. Transforming, remodeling, as life goes on. Such then is the amazing world below, where life, as we have seen, depends on the amazing world we now move to join above. In the cave's blackness, we have discovered a truth good to remember, that our world exists and thrives only in ecological harmony, an interdependence of growing and living things that must be wisely conserved. For it is upon nature's scales that will be weighed the fate of us all. Father time and mother nature 